Working with continuous functions, in the last video we saw the informal definition of continuous functions and some visuals or some graphs to go along with this. That was just to help set in your mind what a continuous function actually is and what causes it to be discontinuous. Now that we understand that thought process, now let's move on to what the formal definition of a continuous function is. And so this is definitely much more intensive definition. A function f is continuous at c, and so that's why my visuals of my last video all use c as an x value. A function f is continuous at c if all three of the following conditions are satisfied. So my first property is that our function at c is defined. So that goes back to college algebra material. Our function has to be defined. Part B, the limit as x approaches c of our function, f of x, exists. And so a lot of times to show that our limit exists, we have to look at the left-hand limit and at the right-hand limit and make sure that those meet up in the middle. And our third property says, Basically, that the answers that we get to part A and part B have to match up. So the limit portion of our definition, that is part B, has to match up with the function portion of our definition, and that is part A. So if we are trying to prove that a function is discontinuous at x equals c, then basically you just have to disprove any one of these properties. So to prove something is discontinuous, you can just basically disprove one property, and that will throw the whole definition away. But if we are trying to show that a function is continuous, we must prove that all three of these properties hold. Now, sometimes it's easy to prove that all three properties hold, and sometimes we have to work for it a little bit. And actually, some examples the examples that are the easiest examples is probably the most difficult to see that all three properties hold because all three properties will be worked in the exact same way. And I'll get to that when we see some examples. But before we actually move into homework problems, I again want to emphasize what each of these properties means individually, and then we'll start to put all of these three together, hence our formal definition of a continuous function. So I'm going to show you the exact same examples that I gave you in the last video, um, but this time I'm going to show you how they fit in with each of our property of our definition here. So this slide shows you examples of discontinuous functions because property A doesn't hold. If we go back and review property A, that's showing our function in itself is defined. So this is material that you've learned back in college algebra. So if I'm showing you it's discontinuous because of property A, what that really means in each of these examples, my function at C is not defined at C. And so not only did I show you the visuals that I have here, I've given you examples down here on the bottom. Now, these examples don't match up with our graphs exactly, but what I was trying to give you here is if you were to graph these examples here, you would see something that mimics these three graphs here. So let's go ahead and look at these one by one. Okay. In my first example, I see my function is not defined at C. That created a hole in our graph at C. An example of this would be this rational function here because if we factored out the numerator, we would see one factor in the numerator cancels with one factor in the denominator. Therefore, that would create a hole in the graph at negative 1 for this specific function right here. In example 2, my function is not defined. I see that because I have a vertical asymptote there. So an actual example of that is something that looks like this, 1 over x squared. So at 0, 
I would see a vertical asymptote at zero, and I would see that my graph would jump from the left-hand side to the right-hand side and never connect up here at my vertical asymptote. In example three, this is again just your typical rational function where it is defined as a fraction. We know whenever the denominator equals zero, that creates a vertical asymptote. So our graph has to jump from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Again, because we have a vertical asymptote at three, that tells us our function is not defined. So these are three examples where a graph is discontinuous because of property A. So let's see examples of a graph where it's discontinuous because of property B. Property B uses our calculus information that we've been focusing on in the last few sections, limits. We need to know that our limit in itself exists. And so most of the time, that means our left-hand limit has to match up with our right-hand limit. So these examples here show us that our graph is not continuous because our limit does not exist, or D and E. So in my first example, I have a piecewise function defined in two different intervals, and I see that my two pieces are disjoint from the left and the right. So that means that my graph is discontinuous at this place right here. And again, this is defined by a piecewise function. My separator is at 3, and so that is why it's discontinuous at 3. In my second example here, I see again a jump from my left-hand side to the right-hand side of my graph. This is because of, again, a piecewise function. My left-hand piece looks like this. My right-hand piece looks like this. My separator is at 3. They don't match up at 3. That's why it's discontinuous at 3, because my limit from the left does not match the limit from my right. And, okay, Notice this graph here was the exact same graph that we had because of property A. So there's two reasons why this graph here is discontinuous at 3. The first reason, because my function is not defined at C. My second reason, because my limit from the left does not match my limit from the right. So there can be multiple reasons of why a graph is discontinuous. So these show us where our limit does not exist, and therefore that tells us that property B doesn't hold. Let's move on to an example why property C does not hold. Remember, C just needs to prove that our limit from part B matches up with our function information from part A. So the limit has to equal where our function is defined. The only time this really happens is when we have a piecewise function that creates a hole in the graph here, and we fill in that hole at C with a point, but this point doesn't match up with that hole specifically. So we can see here is a rational function that creates a hole at negative 1. We try and fill in that hole at negative 1 to fill in that 4, and we see that that does not work out. Therefore, our graph is discontinuous at negative 1. Our limit matches. Our limit gives us this value here. And so let's call that m. And our function is defined. It's defined at this point right here. And so let's call that n. And so each of these exists separately, but they don't match up. And so that's why a function can be discontinuous because of property now that we've seen all the bad examples, let's go ahead yet again and see the good examples. So these are the exact same slide that I gave you back in the first video, but now we can see why it is continuous, because all three properties hold. And I've given you examples of functions to go along with it. So our first example is just a nice polynomial example we can see that this does not cause any problems at any place. Therefore, it's continuous everywhere, especially if we were just looking at specific values, like in this one here, x equals 2. 
My second example, as I said before, was a piecewise function where I have two separate pieces, but these two pieces are going to match up at one. So in this example, my C value would be equivalent to one. So they match up, meaning my graph is continuous at that place. My third example here is a lot like this one here where it doesn't hold because property C doesn't hold. Notice I had a hole in my graph and my function was defined at a point, but they don't match up. Here, I have a hole in my graph, and I also have a function defined at that point, and they do match up. Therefore, my graph is continuous all the way through. So whatever is happening at negative 1, so that would be this C value here at negative 1, it all matches up, so therefore my function is continuous all the way through. Now again, I'm just showing you all these examples and all these um, visuals here to help instill in your mind what continuous functions actually look like and why they might be discontinuous because of all three properties of this formal definition. In my next video, we're going to actually start working through some homework examples.